My name is Millie, and I'm 30 years old. I got married five years ago to my husband, who is five years older than me. He works for a leading corporation and is calm, patient, and a very kind husband. We got pregnant with our first child in our first year of marriage, and I was the height of my happiness. However, after I left the company when I became pregnant, my husband's gentle attitude changed drastically. Hey, where's my food? One day, when my morning sickness was so bad that I couldn't get up, before I knew it, I had dozened off until late afternoon. When Stephen comes home, I tell him this. And he suddenly starts to lose his temper. What? What were you doing at home all day? Do you think I'm stupid? Morning sickness is not a disease. You lazy thing! I'm tired after working all day. Hurry up and get food ready. And from that day on, he began to criticize the way I do the housework every day. Can't you even do something as easy as this? You really are an idiot. This is what Stephen would always say. I don't know how you survived it all the time if you are so stupid. You really don't know anything, do you? What can you do? If I even try to argue with him slightly, he loses his temper and curses. When I try to express my thoughts, though, he would say. I don't care what you think, so just shut up, and scold me, so that I can't even say what I think anymore. I am shocked that my husband had suddenly changed. At first, I thought he just woke up on the wrong side of the bed some days, and that he would return to being a kind husband again soon once our baby is born. However, my hopes disappear. When I see that even after our child is born, he never went back to being the kind husband that I knew. However, I still love my husband and could not hate him. I also didn't want to admit that my marriage was a mistake. Anyone would say that I was being harassed. It seems he showed his true colors after our marriage, but at that time, I didn't even realize it. I thought he'd had changed because I was not good enough, and I began to fear that my husband would abandon me. Five years pass in this state. We are blessed with three beautiful children, but Stephen only gives me five hundred dollars a month as living expenses. We live in company housing, so the rent is deducted from his salary. And our water and utility bills are also paid by direct debit from the bank. My husband says that five hundred dollars is more than enough, but buying milk and diapers for the children, as well as daily necessities and groceries, makes it very tight. I start using my savings from when I was single to pay for our living expenses, but this too has run out. And we are forced to live a very difficult life. When Stephen comes home from work, and sees the cheap dinner I had prepared, he says, "What? This is all there is for dinner? Can you cook something more decent? You're at home every day, wasting your time. Can't you even cook a proper meal?" When I tell him I didn't have enough money to buy the ingredients, he replies, "Huh." I hand you living expenses every month. It's a housewife's duty to make ends meet. That's what old housewives do. You really can't do anything, can you? Stop wasting my money, you parasite! He won't stop yelling. To aid, my husband has been having an affair for years. At first, he was meeting his lover in secret, but recently. He no longer bothers to hide anything. Even at times like this, I'm afraid that he would leave me. I think I'm completely brainwashed by my husband. One day, I'm sensitive to Stephen's mood in this way, and watching my children grow was the only comfort that I had. However, even if I want to dress my children in cute clothes, I can't afford to buy any. Even if my mom friends 
invite me to lunch or tea, I cannot afford to take them. It's fine that I don't get to hang out with my friends, but I feel so bad for the children. Stephen would say that all housewives were making ends meet with five hundred dollars, but the mom friends around me didn't seem to show the slightly bit of sorrow at all. They are always dressed well and are lively, and their children seem to be happy too. I lose confidence in myself more and more, feeling that this is all my fault and that I'm a bad mother. One day, however. I make a bold decision. I talk to one of my mom friends, who I am very close to. When she hears what I have to say, she is truly astonished and says, "None of that is your fault, Millie. Your husband is wrong. He's totally harassing you." I had never even considered Stephen's actions as harassment. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you, Millie. You're neither stupid nor incompetent. You're a very good mother. Thanks to my friend's kind words, I'm able to gather up my courage, and decide to negotiate with my husband for a raise in our living expenses. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm giving you more than enough. When are you gonna stop wasting all my money? But the kids are getting older. There are things I have to buy them, and I need money to spend time with their friends' mothers too. Not in a million years. You just stay at home, take care of kids, and do the housework. Don't talk big to me when you're so incapable. In my husband's cell, the children starting crying. Shut up! You keep them quiet. I want a divorce. Before I knew it, this is what I am saying, and I am surprised at my own words. I never had such thoughts before, and it came out ever so suddenly. Stephen stops, looking surprised for a moment, but immediately says, "Do you really think you're in a position to say something like that, you parasite?" Well, okay. I'll be thrilled to not see your sad face anymore, but you're returning the money you've been squeezing out of me. Five hundred dollars a month, so six thousand dollars a year, making it thirty thousand dollars in five years. And of course, I'm keeping the children. You get the thirty thousand dollars ready and leave on your own. With this, he leaves the house as usual. I hug my crying children, and I cry with them. The youngest one is only eleven months old. Of course, there is no way I can afford to pay thirty thousand dollars, but more than that, I need to do something about the children. I would rather die than be separated from them, but I don't have the confidence to spend any more time with the terrible husband. I'm so overwhelmed that I finally called my mom. My dad passed away when I was in college. So the house I grew up in doesn't exist anymore. My mom is now living with my brother and his wife in the house they built, and this is the reason why I couldn't rely on her. Even when I was having a tough time, I didn't want to worry her. When I tell her what happened on the phone, she tells me off for not noticing her earlier, and I heard her crying. After that. She tells me that my brother and his wife are both worried too, and that I should come to their house as soon as possible. But before that, Mom tells me to gather evidence on Stephen's affair, and so I start recording his actions from that day on. Receipts of him buying presents and brand products to his lover, as well as hotel receipts of them staying together, in addition to credit card statements. Are all carelessly thrown in the garbage, so it is easy to gather evidence. My mom hires a lawyer who speaks to Stephen. He is saying he doesn't want to get a divorce, even if we were separate. He says he is keeping custody of the children. I feel this is going to take a long time, and decide to get ready to take the children to my brother's house. However, while this is happening. 
we find out that Stephen has stomach cancer. As it was detected early, they said it can be cured by surgical removal. Stephen goes to stay at the hospital. Life without my husband at home is truly peaceful and refreshing, and I feel so calm all the time. Perhaps it is because I have become more cheerful, but I feel that my children also seem to be livelier than usual. Seeing my children in such a state, I become even more certain that I need to get a divorce. I have no regrets leaving my husband, who says his cancer is due to a stress from my actions. I'm determined to raise my children on my own, and make them happy, no matter what. Then, Stephen suddenly softens his attitude, and he says he is willing to divorce me. It seems that by fighting out about the cancer and having his life in danger, and by overcoming it, he has realized that he wants to start his life all over. Now that he has been given a second chance at life, he wants to reset everything, let go of all of that is unnecessary, and live life with the people they are truly precious to him. Even in a situation like this. It's all about himself. I don't mind what he says about me, but to call the children unnecessary too, I am just stunned. However, there is no reason for me to throw away this opportunity to get divorced. I swiftly get things done before Stephen changes mind. He seems to have no regrets letting go of the children anymore. So I asked him to sign the pledge that states he will never see them again. This is convenient for me. Although I will not be receiving child support, he is going to be paying a large amount of compensation, and I am also requesting a compensation to his lover. I'm finally able to divorce this man. Stephen is concerned what everyone will think, so he tells his colleagues and the neighbors that the moment he got ill, I was the one who left him. I'm frustrated at how selfish he can be, but more than that, I'm just pleased that I get to leave him. I'm finally free. My life is about to begin. Filled with a sense of happiness and freedom, I leave the house where I had lived with him for all those years. Shortly after my departure, I hear that Stephen married a lover. He had been seen for many years. It seems she works under him at the office. I rent an apartment near my brother's house, and am raising the children with my mother, brother, and his wife's help. I also found a job. It has not been easy, but I am much happier than before. Six months later. My mom tells me that she received a phone call from Stephen's dad. Has something happened to Stephen? I hurriedly call his dad back, and find that Stephen has gotten a divorce again. Fortunately, his cancer has not recurred, and he is still alive and well. He was living a peaceful life with his new wife, but it seems that after a while, he started harassing her too. She left the house immediately, and divorced him soon after. She also made a scene at the company that they both still working, and told everybody about Stephen's attitude, which led him to quit. It seems he has moved out of the company housing, is paying more compensation to his new wife, has no more money, and has returned to his parents' house. He has lost all his energy. And is saying he wants to see his children, and start over with me again. His dad couldn't stand seeing Stephen in his state anymore, so he decided to reach out to me. I feel so angry. I'm finally free, but Stephen appears in front of me like this, as if a ghost. He had an affair for so many years, and got married after finally getting rid of me. But got divorced after six months. It's all his own fault. 
but instead of showing remorse, he wants to see his children, and he wants to start over. Who in the world does he think he is? Who's the parasite now? I'm speechless. I somehow manage to hold down my rising anger, and tell Stevens that that I intend to never see him again. Before I hang up. However, a few days later, on my way home from work, Stephen is waiting for me at a park near my house, and I feel like my heart is about to stop. He looks pale and exhausted. At first, I couldn't tell who he was. Millie, I know now. You're the only one for me. Our children need a father, right? A lot happened, but let's start over. You must be having a tough time on your own, you know. I can do the housework for a while. Don't be ridiculous. I can't help myself, and I interrupt him. What do you mean, let's start over? It would make sense if I said that, but you have no right. I have no intention of starting anything over with you. And I'm thrilled to be away from you. I don't care what's happened to you. You say I must be having a tough time on my own. I'm so much better than when I was married to you. Stephen is startled and has his mouth hanging open. It's the first time that I'm talking back to him like this, so this response is understandable. You just leave. I don't know since when you've been here. But if you think you can waste your time like this, why don't you go job hunting or something? You're an adult. Don't get your dad to phone me. And I don't know how you found out where I live. But if you come anywhere near me again, I'm calling the police. That's all. Goodbye. I leave him standing there. I'm scared and furious at my ex-husband for suddenly appearing in front of me like this. But remembering the look on his face, I feel much better. My children and I have not seen my ex-husband since. The four of us are living peacefully and happily, and I believe there is still so much to experience in life. I'm going to stay positive and work hard until my children grow up.